There are those on Saturday night who search for the party that ends. And there are those who on Saturday night search for the party that never ends. We search for the party that never ends. And you? The center of all here is Jesus. All the rest of the cathedral, assembly and preacher are only signum et rimandum of the one truth. Prima di tutto, grazie di essere venuti. First of all, thanks for coming here. Welcome. Tonight you're gonna have to be content with me because Friar Volantino is not here. We're not as great as him. But we will try to do as best as we can. So please pray hard, because tonight we have to talk about two arguments. So first of all, we will talk about why do we have to recognize the body of Jesus in the living Eucharist, in the holy living Eucharist? And then we will have to treat of another topic, that is, why listen to Mary, the mother of Jesus? So please pray for us that we can do all of this in a short summary. We will have to make it short. Obviously, we will start with the Word of God. So I will talk to you now uh, with some passages from the Word of God on this first topic of why you recognize Jesus in the Holy Living Eucharist and then the teaching of the Church. And then we will... It would be good if you, if you come closer because we will play out a short scene together with some volunteers and Friar Michael and maybe also me to explain something that is important still on this topic and then Friar Michael will delight us with passages from scripture on Our Lady and also with the teaching of the Church we will end then with a historical fact that is very impressive and then we will end there so first of all why recognize Jesus in the Holy Living Eucharist. First of all, we can start with the etymology of the word Eucharist. The other day when we had the other catechesis, Fray Valentino gave a hint on the etymology of the word Eucharist. And then there are also further meanings of this word. Uh, the word Eucharist, indeed, as Friar Joseph made me realize, Friar Joseph is our brother who is studying now at the Biblical Institute now. So the word Eucharist comes from a Greek noun that means also recognition. This Greek noun means also recognition. And then there is the word Eucharistos, which means the one who recognizes. So the Lord wants us first of all to be people who recognize, who first of all recognize his own sacrifice, of the sacrifice of the Lord who has given his body and his blood for us, in order that we may not remain in the sadness of the wrong things of this world and in the injustices of this world, and above all, that we may not end up in the eternal fire. So we have to truly consider this great sacrifice that he made for us, this great gift of the resurrection, immortality one day, to live forever in a world without complaint, without lament, without arguments and without betrayals, without wars nor infirmities, and even immortality, not just of the soul, but also in the body. So an immortal body, always young, always beautiful, always perfect, forever. So if you really just think of that, oh my God, we really have to thank the Lord and recognize that this is more than a revolution. This sacrifice of his body and his blood given for us for the remission of our sins. So now here is recognition. To recognize in the living Eucharist the body and the blood of the Lord. If you just think whenever you are at work that you, for example, put all your efforts in carrying out a project if there was one of your co-workers who would not recognize at all the work that you've done and, and does as if the work was all his, then you already feel that this is a great injustice, right? 
or if for example for all your life you have grown children and you gave them all and you can understand that very well and then there's a son um, Friar Volantino made me aware of this of this meditation if there is a son for whom for example you paid all the studies that cost very much and you permitted him to get to a beautiful career and he says no this is all my merit then you feel a little upset. So we also think of this. So when already we can be upset when someone does not recognize what we do, let's just think that also the Lord can be upset with us if we do not consider the sacrifice that He has done for us. And then this is also a matter of justice. But now, uh, to recognize, that is, we have to recognize Jesus in the Eucharist. So we have to recognize Jesus in the Eucharist, yes, but also Jesus in the Holy Living Eucharist. If you pay attention to the title, Holy Living Eucharist. So there were saints who said, I want to be a living host, a host of the Lord. Like uh, St. Ignatius of Antioch said that, also St. Patrick, and so on. So, and there is also a prayer in the book of the liturgy that says that we may be a living Eucharist, loving our neighbor as ourselves. So also we ourselves have to become a Eucharist, a host. We ourselves, if you pay attention, as St. Paul says, we are members of the body of Christ. In the body of Christ is the Church. So also we are Eucharist. So also those who strive to imitate Jesus, uh, if we imitate Jesus, then also we are living Eucharists. So now we will see a little bit why Jesus wants us, yes, to recognize his body in the sacrament of the Eucharist, but also in his followers, in those who imitate him. So now we start from the Old Testament uh, there, obviously in the Old Testament Jesus was not yet there. So we will try to see the prefiguration, the type, where this uh, recognition of the body of Christ is prefigured in the Old Testament, for example. Now, as Prior Volantino already spoke about the difference between the common bread and the sacred bread, so already in the Old Testament there was a difference between the bread that is only there to eat it and a bread that is offered to the Lord as something that is sacred. So we will not focus on this topic another time, yet we will focus more on a prefiguration of how to recognize the presence of the Lord in those who follow Him, in those who want to imitate Him, already in the Old Testament. So, for example, there is a passage that once Friar Michael found when he was still just wearing the scapular and he was just doing his six months experience. And he found a beautiful passage that we all were quite struck by that says, The portion of the Lord is his people. So, a piece of the Lord is his people. So, already in the Old Testament, those who made a covenant with the Lord became a piece of the Lord, a portion. So, we can see this even now. When we say that we are part of the body of Christ, a piece of the body of Christ in some way, we can make this uh, connection between the Old and the New Testament. And indeed, then, I finish up now with what the Old Testament says. There was a prophet in the book of Numbers who was a pagan prophet who did not believe yet, uh, he did not know yet the covenant of the Lord that he made with his people, the Jews. So this pagan prophet was called Balaam. And at a certain point there are some kings who tell him, you have to go and curse the people of Israel. That in that moment was 
on pilgrimage in the desert that was still in the time of Moses. And what does he do? He goes with the intention to curse the people of Israel, but but when he was on his way, the Lord made him understand that it wasn't the right way. He saw, now I, I won't tell you all of it, but he saw an angel who was about to kill him if he continued on his way in order to curse the Lord. But the Lord tells him once that he understands that it's not the will of God, the Lord tells him, go on on your way and do what I tell you. And when you come in front of the, all the people of Israel, instead of cursing this people, you will bless it. So he properly recognizes the presence of the Lord that is in this people Israel. So this here is just an aspect of what God wants from us that we may recognize also his presence and then also step by step his body and his blood also in those who try to follow him who is Jesus now. Now going on to the New Testament Last week, uh, Friar Volantino explained to you something. Let's see if you still remember something from that. I'm sure you already remember a lot of things of what I wanted to tell you. When he tells that story, when he was on a pilgrimage and this person he hosted him at home and then he wanted to make him believe that when a host comes to his house and he, then it's just enough to bless the bread as if it was the body of Christ, the supper that was celebrated. Fra Volantino then gave him a passage to make him understand that it's not really like that that the supper of the Lord, you can't just take it there at home, just simply with the normal food. So to make this difference, in the New Testament there is a phrase, a verse that can help these kind of people who think that it's enough just to make the supper of the Lord at home without going to Mass. Do you remember something about that, maybe? Salvatrice, maybe? You remember that story. And so the passage? So in this passage, St. Paul explains that when you come together for the Supper of the Lord, wait for each other. So if someone is hungry, they shall eat at home. So he makes the difference between the Supper of the Lord and eating at home. And then he says this passage, is, which is very important, that those who eat and drink the body of Christ without recognizing it, then they eat it to their own condemnation. Indeed, we can see that in the Gospel there is something that kind of verifies this phrase of St. Paul right there in the moment of the Last Supper when Jesus celebrates the Eucharist for the first time that there was Judas who was then there thinking to betray the Lord and right there, when Judas takes the bite of bread, the devil enters into him. So when someone comes and uh, they take the Eucharist, yet with another intention than that of doing the will of God, with a completely opposed intention, not intending that if someone doesn't know it, but if someone is not upright, so then there one risk, instead of eating Jesus, there is to eat their own condemnation. Now let's go on a little bit. And we will see that also in the New Testament, that it is important to recognize Jesus not only in the sacrament but also in those who strive to imitate him. There's a passage that you all know that I want to present you now with a story that truly happened. Once Fra Valentino with another brother were in Sardinia 
on a pilgrimage and at a certain point when evening came they asked for hospitality because they were hitchhiking uh, you all know that we travel walking and hitchhiking without carrying anything with us at a certain point they asked some people who worked uh, totally for Jesus and these people refused them so then Fray Valentino asked them if Jesus would come in this moment and who would ask you to be housed by you what would you do? So then that person answers, what's this got to do with it? You're not Jesus. Then in that moment, the friar answers, let's hope that you may be reminded of, more or less he said this, of that passage of Matthew 25 and the following, so that chapter 25 of Matthew, there is that account where Jesus speaks about the universal judgment with the parable of a king who unites the sheep and the goats and then he separates them. You remember, right? The sheep on the right and the goats to the left. And at a certain point he says to those people with a great heart, Come, you're blessed by my father, because I was a stranger and you hosted me. I was hungry and you fed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me, etc., etc. And then these people ask him, But when, Lord, did we see you a stranger and we hosted you? When did we see you hungry and we gave you food, etc., etc.? And then Jesus answers them, Whenever you did these things to the least of my brothers, then you did it to me. You know this very well. Maybe in that moment some people may be distracted and not remember this, because afterwards there's then also the, the king who separates the sheep and the goats, because then he says to those who are called the goats, who didn't do good deeds, and so uh, consequently they're not beautiful. We don't want and we don't wish anyone to have these consequences of which Jesus speaks, depart from me, you evildoers, into the fire and so on. Because as long as they're in life, there's the chance that they can repent and so on. So we hope the best for all. But now we have to also pay attention and remember some fundamental elements of the gospel. And now I also wanted to remind you of something very shortly and then we will go on. That event of St. Paul, maybe you remember when St. Paul falls to the ground, as it is told in the Acts of the Apostles, where Jesus tells him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Do you remember this um, vision as he wanted to go to Dam Damascus with the letter of the high priest or the priest? with the intention to persecute the Christians and maybe to kill them, we don't know, with an ugly intention. He took off in that direction, on the road to Damascus. According to the tradition, he falls from the horse and in that moment Jesus tells him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And then Paul, who was called before his conversion, was called Saul, answers him, Who are you? And Jesus says, I am Jesus, whom you persecute. But you may tell me this is strange, because Jesus had already ascended to heaven. And he was not anymore amongst his disciples, like a phys physical person. So when Jesus asks him, why do you persecute me? Yes, Saul was persecuting Jesus, but in the person of the Christians and in those who imitated him. It's a good example that makes us understand that when we put obstacles or when we hurt someone who strives to follow Jesus, it is as if we persecuted Jesus himself. And then at the end, um, I just wanted to remind um, a last passage from the scriptures from the New Testament, a passage that Jesus says, 
Those who recognize me in front of men, also I will recognize in front of my Heavenly Father. And so this makes us understand that then, if one day we want to have recognition in heaven, before that we will have to exercise this recognition already now. To recognize Jesus by proclaiming Him, by announcing Him, but also recognizing Him in those who follow Him. But now let's go on, let's try to be quick. We go on to the teaching of the Church. We check out first the patristic age, so the first fathers of the Church. I want to introduce this passage uh, with an experience, a special experience, that happened to us um, some fi four or five years ago. We were with our community, we were sitting at table one evening with several brothers and there was maybe a little discussion or something. And then Friar Valentino, who guided us, tried to explain something so to avoid offending each other, avoiding to give thorns to each other. So he told us, look, he reminded us of this, but he also explained it to us in a fine way. It's important that we remember that we have in front of us another one who is as ourselves. Would I be pleased if someone told me what I'm about to tell them? In this way someone reflects always before they speak. Wait, would I like what I'm saying to this brother or this sister? So, as Jesus says, don't do to the others what you not want to be done to yourself. And so after he said this, maybe he explained that better to you than me uh, for sure, then he stood up and he addressed someone and then a few of us and then calling that person with his same name because he said that we have to see in them another ourselves. So he started to call as if I was walking towards Friar Michael and I would say, hey, Friar Nathaniel, and then we hugged each other. Hey, Friar Nathaniel, so I call Antonino Friar Nathaniel. Or for example, Friar Michael stands up and goes and finds uh, Sebastian and then he hugs him and he calls him Friar Michael, etc, etc. And we all at table had this little exercise in order to remember well what we were told. So then throughout the night, and then after that night, uh, if I don't remember wrong, it was the next morning. We went to pray in the chapel. We get there and read the Office of Readings. And there was a passage of St. Augustine. There was a whole reading of St. Augustine. And St. Augustine said this. Every time that you did these things, to these least of my brothers, you have done it to me. So Jesus calls the littlest of the faithful another himself. And so the past night we had tried to call each other another ourself. But St. Augustine then uh, specifies this touch us effectively because we just had this experience. And then St. Augustine specifies that these least of his brothers, or rather another ourselves, are those who try to dwell in Christ, that is to strive to behave as Jesus behaved, even though with all one's proper limits, as far as possible, etc., but that they at least try to. Then, Obviously, we could even say many more things. I recall a passage from St. Bernard of Clairvaux, from the time of the saints of the medieval ages, who said, Men believe after they have seen, because they have seen the witness of God that became absolutely credible. So sometimes uh, the Lord knows that we are in need to see, let's say, to have a certain experience, to see something in order to believe, or in order to grow all the more in faith. 
Indeed, also in the Middle Ages, there were so many Eucharistic miracles in order to help many to believe all the more in this presence in the body and blood of Jesus. Maybe you remember that there's a, a story of Saint Anthony of Padua. So at the time of Saint Anthony of Padua, there was a farmer who did not believe in God. And he came, let's say, a little bit in order to challenge the Lord, to challenge Saint Anthony of Padua. When the procession with the Most Holy Sacrament came by, he took his donkey, who had not eaten at all, and he put straw in front of him, and the, that donkey had not eaten for a very long time. Then he put a little straw next to the donkey when the Most Blessed Sacrament passed by, and he wanted to see if the donkey recognizes the presence of the Lord Jesus inside the host. And the donkey, instead of throwing, eating up the straw, instead he remained and he bowed down, looking towards the Most Holy Sacrament. So if you think of that, we can say that if even the donkey was able to recognize Jesus in the Most Holy Sacrament, who are we if you are not able to recognize Him? And so this miracle truly makes us think. Then going on to the modern era, we see that there is the, the same curator of ours, who said that in heaven there is the fullness of recognition. So all of us will truly recognize whatever we have done in this life, etc., etc. So also the Saint Curator of Ars says something beautiful. I read it out to you. On Judgment Day we will see the flesh of the Lord shine through His glorious body of those who received Him worthily on the earth. As when you see gold that shines among copper, or as silver that shines among lead. So in some way, when we will have the glorious body, in a certain way, we will see the body of the Lord shine through those who received Him on earth, but also imitating Jesus, etc., etc. And as a confirmation indeed, also now passing to the contemporary age, we see that St. Teresa of the Child Jesus says that in heaven there will be no indifferent gazes, but each one of us will recognize the merits of each other. So as we said a little bit as we said before with the passage of Jesus, when he says, come, you blessed by my Father, etc. And then in the end we have a passage from the Catechism that reminds us of what St. Paul said that indeed makes us understand that if someone is aware that he committed a grave sin, he has to receive first of all the sacrament of reconciliation before eating the Eucharist, because St. Paul says that those who eat the body of Christ unworthily eats his own condemnation. He says both if someone eats it without recognizing it and unworthily. And now we conclude with a passage from, Saint from, from Pope Francis. So Pope Francis says this, the Eucharist is essential. The brothers gave this to me today, uh, he, the Pope published that on Twitter, that the Eucharist is the essential thing for us, because Jesus wants to enter our life and fill it out with his grace. Now we will just, uh, now we will just talk a little more precisely about something. And sometimes they say we have to see Jesus in the poor, in all of them, even in those who are brigands. So then one has to understand also this, because if someone slaps you in the face for three times and then uh, he offends you, in that deed uh, you cannot say that you see Jesus in that deed, in that moment, in that person. My spiritual director pointed this also out to me. But one could make the distinction. In potency, as Saint Thomas Aquinas said, in potency that would be in the heart 
as if when is one is baptized there's already the seed the seed of Jesus in that person but it didn't come out yet he didn't make it grow yet if that person has just a behavior that the Lord does not want but as there is the possibility that Jesus step by step grows in his heart we can see Jesus in potency in that person but he's not there yet in act in the concrete deeds this is to say that at least you can recognize Jesus also in your neighbor because many times instead of seeing the behavior of Jesus we see the behavior of the devil but there's the possibility that the person changes and that the presence of Jesus may be truly there so we have to help him so that Jesus may grow in his heart